Ernst Heinkel wanted to design planes ever since he was just a kid in the German Empire. He saw zeppelins and biplane aircraft, true marvels of modern technology, conquering the sky, and imagined his own designs up there in the air. It was 1911 when he took a biplane of his own design into the skies and landed uh, in a hospital bed after almost an immediate crash. After that, the planes he made were always tested by professional pilots, but he didn't give up on his dream. Heinkel created a company which eventually became one of the titans of the German combat aircraft industry. He worked for several different companies during the First World War. When it just started, the engineer, barely 26 years old, was already the chief designer at Hansa Brandenburg, with Germany and Austria-Hungary lining up to accept his planes into service. After the war, though, aircraft manufacturers of the Weimar Republic faced heavy regulation. As a way to work around those restrictions, Heinkel founded Saab in Sweden, while also working at his own company, Heinkel Flugzeugwerke. Before 1933, the company mostly manufactured biplane aircraft, including some designed for military applications. Naturally, the government of the Republic placed some orders in secret, but none of those projects advanced to full-scale production. After Hitler's party came to power, though, the company found itself in a much better position. Despite all bans and restrictions, the new government was adamant about getting a strong air force. Soon, the military placed an order at Heinkel for a new biplane fighter and showed interest in the Blitz, a fast mail plane manufactured by the company, or more precisely, in the possibility of converting it into a bomber. Heinkel was eager to cooperate and came to the conclusion that it could be done, but delegated the task to design the new bomber to Siegfried and Walter Gunther. The brothers set to work and soon the HE-111 was born, with all its distinctive traits. It was an all-metal monoplane with retractable landing gear, enclosed cockpits and the trademark elliptical wing, allowing for better aerodynamics. To conceal the true nature of the HE-111, the Heinkel introduced it to the public as a civil airliner. It even received recognition as the fastest passenger aircraft in the world. As in 1936, the new designs established a new record by reaching the speed of 402 kph. Soon, it passed all the tests and performed well enough to be accepted into service along with the Junkers 86. The HE-111 remained in production until 1944, with more than 8,000 aircraft of this series manufactured throughout the years. There are several variants of this bomber available in War Thunder. The H-3 anti-shipping strike version, with U-more engines and a bigger crew. The H-6 featuring more guns and the late H-16. The HE-111 turned out to be one of the biggest achievements of Heinkel Flugzeugwerke and one of the main bombers of the Luftwaffe during World War II, surpassed only by the U-88, which somehow proved to be even more versatile. During the 1930s, the German command also came to the conclusion that Germany needed a long-range bomber. The most active lobbyist of the program for creating long-range bombers was General Walter Weffer, who believed that Germany needed a heavy bomber with sufficient range to reach the Ural Mountains. After unsuccessful attempts by both Dornier and Junkers, the task was given to engineers at Heinkel. But designing this plane turned out to be a nightmare. One day, German decision-makers wanted to turn the 10-ton aircraft into a dive bomber. The next day, they suddenly changed their mind. And then they agonized whether they should abandon the project altogether. Rinse and repeat. Despite all that, 
the HE-177 still somehow made it to full-scale production. It's not easy to say, though, whether that was a good thing or not, since its engines were prone to catching fire and the planes themselves were constantly breaking down. The bomber received the sarcastic nickname of Reichsleiter. There were a few reasons for the fire problem, including the tightly packed nature of the power system engine installations used on the HE-177, and the fact that the central exhaust system routinely became excessively hot. The Luftwaffe spent lots of resources and time trying to fix the Greif, but all that effort was pretty much for naught. Nevertheless, it was the only long-range heavy bomber available to Germany at the time, so despite all common sense and logic, more than a thousand of these deeply flawed bombers were sent to war anyway. It's important to note that Heinkel Flugzeugwerke wasn't just about bombers. The biplane fighters of the HE-51 series were accepted into service as early as the low 1930s, being one of the first proper fighter aircraft to be officially accepted into service in Germany at that time, they became somewhat of a symbol of the Luftwaffe for a short while. Unfortunately, in 1936, when those fighters clashed with the Soviet I-15s in the skies of Spain, they were completely outclassed, forcing Germany to quickly replace them with the new planes of the Messerschmitt Bf 109 series. Interestingly enough, that could be new Heinkels flying to Spain instead of Bf 109s, as the company had a brand new HE-112 designed to compete for the same fighter contract at the ready. But it came second behind the Messerschmitt Bf 109. The planes were originally pretty similar in terms of performance, but the HE-112 suffered a few crashes during tests and ultimately, officials of the RLM decided to go with the Bf 109. That was also the time when it was pretty much settled that, from that moment onwards, Messerschmitt engineers would be responsible for making new fighter aircraft, while people at Heinkel would work on bomber designs. Heinkel wasn't too happy about this arrangement, and his company spent a few years trying to work out the kinks of the HE-112 to sell it to other countries like Romania, Spain or Japan. Those efforts were mostly in vain, but Heinkel managed to sell the aircraft to Romania where it was accepted into service and even used in actual combat. That wasn't the end of the story. Later, Heinkel developed yet another fighter aircraft, this time to replace the Bf 109. In 1939, the HE-100 reached the speed of 746 kph, establishing a new world record. That was impressive. But this design was ultimately more of a poster aircraft, used for propaganda purposes and not in actual combat, as it proved to be too unreliable to be operated in the field. Then we have the HE-219. Yeah, one of the most unusual German aircraft of the time. As it was designed as a counter to Allied bombers, this night fighter was equipped with powerful 30mm cannons, as well as the Liechtenstein SN2 Advanced VHF Band Intercept Radar. The Eagle Owl proved to be quite effective in combat, but it was never available in quantity, and so it failed to have a significant effect on the war. Finally, we simply have to mention the HE-162 Jet Fighter, also known as the People's Fighter, or Salamander. This aircraft was created late in the war as a result of a desperate attempt to quickly design a throwaway fighter. An aircraft that would be both sufficiently fast and simple enough so that it could be handled by inexperienced pilots. Constructed mostly from wood with its parts held together by glue, it turned out to be a pretty difficult plane to fly. In the end, it was too late to produce the fighter en masse, but maybe that was a blessing in disguise. 
The salamander would definitely be the undoing of many a pilot. After the war, Heinkel Flugzeugwerke survived, but was prohibited from manufacturing aircraft for quite a while. The company switched to making microcars, scooters and mopeds until it made a return with license-built F-104 Starfighters in the 1950s. Aircraft designed by the company with the HE-111 probably being the only exception were never the winners. They were often overshadowed by planes made by other manufacturers or didn't even make it to full production. Despite that, the company founded by Ernst Heinkel definitely made history as the creator of one of the main bombers of the Luftwaffe and the designer of the first ever jet, paving the way for many other aircraft designers all round the world. What do you think about Heinkel aircraft? Come on, start writing and tell us in the comments below, because we really do listen and respond. Thanks.